Hello, my name is Vicki Vanmater, and I am an art teacher at Bluffton High School. So I teach high school art. I'm the only art teacher at Bluffton High School. And my game is called Design Your Mindset. This game it was created for my digital design class. This is a class that any student can take after they have taken an intro to art. Once they take intro to art, all the students can take any other uh, art classes that are available to them. But intro to art is a pre re prerequisite to all of them. So this design was mainly uh, created for my digital design class, which we do a little bit of some different graphics in there, do infographics, Photoshop, Illustrator, and even a little bit of iMovie. Um, the class consists mostly of sophomores, juniors, and seniors, since it has the prerequisite of the intro to art, and it is designed to be played digitally. So uh, I'm going to go through some different platforms with you that I use to create this, but this game would be best if it was sent to a game designer where they can implement all the different aspects of the design together. But you're going to see my design kind of goes back for back and forth between a lot of different platforms because I couldn't get all the platforms to work together to one. So here in a minute, I will show you how the whole game is played. Okay, to give you a little background on the game before I show you how it's played, um, it, the basis is off a of digital citizenship and the elements and principles of art. Uh, the digital citizenship is implemented through these action cards, which you're going to see in a minute come up on the Padlet um, through a random generator. And what I did is I came up with about 40 different digital citizenship terms and I put the term and a card and the definition. The point of this is just to get the kids to uh, the kids familiar with different digital citizenship terms before we do some other digital citizenship activities that we do throughout the semester in the classroom. So I'll uh, just show you a few different examples of some of these action cards and their definitions. Then um, for my content area, I wanted to implement what are called the elements and principles of art. The elements and principles of art are used in almost every art classroom that I've ever been a part of. Uh, they are the basic foundations for work of art and different tools that are taught to different art classes. So you can be able to draw and understand different works of art. So the elements of art, there are seven of them, line, shape, form, value, texture, space, and color are the basic tools that artists use to create a work of art. So you do not have to use every single element of art, uh, but you do have to use at least one of them to get a visual piece. And you can use any combination. Um, you can use two, you can use all seven, you can use three or four. It's really up to the artist. But what we do is we take these elements and we use the elements to create what are called the principles of art. Uh, there are different sets of principles of art. Um, usually there's around nine of them, but these are the ones that I wanted to focus on. Balance, emphasis, variety, rhythm and movement, scale and proportion, harmony and contrast. Um, basically the principles of art are how you organize the tools. The elements of art. So you want to think of it kind of like a recipe. Uh, when you have a recipe, you have ingredients. Well, the ingredients would be your elements of art, your tools, and then your recipe would be your principles of art. So every time you have a different recipe, you use different ingredients. So same thing with the work of art. You use different elements of art to create, to put together different principles of art to come up with a work of art or a visual piece. So these are going to be implemented into the game and be my focus for the game. The digital citizenship action cards, the elements and principles of art. All right, so the game starts out basically through Padlet. So I give the students a link to Padlet, to this Padlet uh, game board. And I do that through Canvas. We are one-to-one -one and we use Canvas Learning Management System. So very easily I can send the link out through there. Again, they all have Chromebooks, their own individual Chromebooks, uh, so they can easily get to this link. And then they also use a some type of drawing platform on their Chromebook. So they can use Canva Chrome or some other kind of platform. 
The game is basically a mix between Pictionary and Apples to Apples or Cards Against Humanity. So um, basically what they do is you have these action cards and there's about 40 of these. And then I created a, an action card generator here and then you just push play and it cycles through and then you have to push pause. So wherever it pauses, and it paused on fake news, that is the term that they're going to use to draw. And so these are all digital citizenship terms. So I would go through the word and the definition with them, and then they would have to draw this term. Um, so that's the Pictionary aspect of it. But there's a little bit of a trick to it. Later on, you're going to see that they have to incorporate an element of art or a principle of art to go along with that term to create it. So it's kind of the basics to get started. And next I will go through the elements and principles of art and how we generate those into the game. All right, now once the action card was chosen, like ours was fake news, then um, because of the way my platform set up, I could not embed the elements and principles of art spinner that I created into Padlet. So I needed to jump back and forth to go to a um, PowerPoint. So in the PowerPoint, I created an elements spinner and a principal spinner. Um, in the elements spinner, actually the whole game is played in seven different rounds. There's three rounds where we choose an element of art. So the first card we chose was fake news. And then I would choose, or then I would spin the elements of art spinner. And then once it stops, stopped on value, the kids would have to try to um, illustrate fake news, emphasizing value. Now it says, doesn't mean they can't use any other elements, but the main emphasis needs to be value. So we do three rounds of this and then with different action cards for each one. So we do a new action card, do a new element, and then we do three rounds of principles, the new action card, and a new principle, same uh, thing. Choose a principle, and this would be variety. So again, the students would have to show variety with whatever action word was chosen. So let's say bias was cho chosen. Uh, so they'd have to come up with a unique way to show that. And then, so three rounds of elements, three rounds of principles. Then we have a bonus round where we do. So for the bonus round, we use both the elements and the principles. And it's double the points. So again, we choose a new action card. And let's say it was like um, troll was the new action card. It would give the definition. Then line would be their focus on the elements. And movement would be the focus on their principles. So they would have to combine those two, the elements and the principles, and troll. And try to visually uh, draw something out within two minutes. So. After we choose, do the spinners, do the action cards, then they will have a timer. So then a timer is set up again. I could not embed this into the Padlet. Even if I did, I think it would make it really, really crowded visually to see. Uh, so then the timer would go off and they would have two minutes. This would be displaying so they uh, knew how much time that they would have. Okay, so after the spinner and after the timer, goes off then the students will display all their um, drawings up on the padlet again they will use a number instead of their names when we tested it i used the names and figured out i probably should use numbers instead so it stays anonymous um, so this is an example of the test play and before i had had a elements of art generator which you see over here in a principles of art generator. And I also had the action card generator, which wasn't working at the time. So I had to kind of manipulate some things, but anyways, it was a lot on the board. Um, so I decided that's why I do want those things separate. So that's why they're separate in this video, but it's different on this uh, example sheet. So escalate was the word shape was the element movement was the principle. So this is a bonus round. And uh, again, when I did this, I thought, man, the kids are just really going to struggle with this. I was amazed. I was amazed with how the kids focused on shape, focused on movement and rhythm, and still got the term escalate to come out visually. So the, here are all their examples. And then after we put the examples on, we have a discussion and a persuasion 
period. And at this point, it's kind of like apples to apples and cards against humanity. You get to verbally say which ones you like, which ones you don't like, or which ones you think fit. And then we have a discussion. Which ones do we think fit the word escalate? Which one do you think fit using shape and movement? And if you want to persuade somebody, even though they don't know which one's yours, hey, I really like this one because. So you can fight for your own or you can fight for others. Then each student is going to vote by likes. So um, they cannot vote for their own. That's the only stipulation. And they get up to three votes. So they get to like three different designs. I like this idea because it gives them three different chances to get somebody else uh, some points. And it's not just limited to one because really there were a lot of cool different ideas. And I would have had a hard time just choosing one anyways. So it kind of opens up the playing field a little bit. Uh, but also get some a little bit more points too to make it seem a little bit more competitive. So they liked uh, all the ones. And then what I would do after the like period is I would put it on a score sheet. Okay, so again, we would do the uh, discussion period and then we would vote. Okay. So this is an example of the scoring spreadsheet on how I would keep score after each round. Um, so right here, like I said, for the Padlet, I think I would give each student a number and not let them let the rest of the class know what their number is. I would assign them a number and then that way on their Padlet, they can just put their number so I know who scores what. Um, so here's the number versus the student name. And then I have the elements of art round one, round two, round three. Their points, total points for those rounds. Then the principles of art, remember, with three rounds for elements, three rounds for principles. And then that bonus round, which is doubled points. And then here would be their total points at the completion of the game. And then at the completion of the game, they will each earn a badge. Everybody earns a badge this way again. Um, Everybody feels like they accomplished something and it's it's still competitive, but yet everybody receives something for playing the game. So uh, how I did this was I kind of divided it up into thirds because I have three different badges. Uh, the survivor badge is the lowest badge. Um, so that goes to the lowest third. And then the fierce is the next, the middle layer badge. And then the ruthless is the highest level badge. And I'll show you an example of those badges. So these badges are based off of our school mascot, which is a tiger. Um, the survivor, like I said, is the bottom third. So it's kind of that beginning level. You're just surviving, just doing enough to get by. Uh, fierce kind of gives it a level up. And then ruthless is that over, above, and beyond. You've really went the extra mile. So what they will do is they take these um, badges and they put them into their digital portfolios, which we have. Uh, we have done all throughout the semester. Uh, so it's just another accomplishment that they get to put into their digital portfolios. This is something we've been trying to incorporate into the class this year uh, to show kind of their growth and learning. And then they can also even go back to uh, that gameplay and maybe take an example or take a screenshot not only of this, but could also show their screenshot of this and explain how they tried to uh, show, you know, escalate using shape and movement. So again, uh, the idea is to kind of show their learning in um, Padlet, the other, or in their portfolio. But the main thing is to get them familiar with the digital um, citizenship terms. Uh, like I said, I had 40 total of those, but also kind of a review of the elements and the principles of art uh, that we use throughout the semester. Uh, one thing that I would probably change uh, or not change, but implement when I do the game is that I would go back to the very beginning here. I would go through and I would remind them of those elements and principles of art. That was one thing that they said they weren't, even though we went through them, they needed a reminder kind of what they were before we played the game. So I would probably go through this and this with them before I started the game. 
overall, um, for the gameplay, especially after I tested it, it worked a lot better than what I thought it would. Uh, when I first started doing this, I thought, oh my gosh, these kids are going to be overwhelmed. But they really did amaze me. Uh, they really enjoyed it too. So I thought it was a great way to incorporate the digital citizenship terms and then also focus on reviewing the elements and principles. This would be a great game to use at the beginning of the year, even in the middle of the year, just to kind of remind them of different things and at the end of the year as a, as a fun activity. Um, they did say that it was very engaging um, and they you know, thought it made them think creatively and pushed them to come up with some unique ideas. And they also just loved seeing everybody else's ideas. So. Not only is this good for the digital citizenship and the elements of principles, but since it is a digital design class, I thought it was a great way to show different examples of how the students can visually come up with different ideas uh, without using words. So overall, it worked out great, a lot better than I expected. Um, probably wasn't in depth. Um, and I would have liked all the platforms to work a little bit better together, but being digitally, um, created that was kind of tough to do. So overall, I was happy, uh, but still have a lot of things that could be worked on. Thank you for listening and good luck with all yours.